Hey guys, Aditya here again, TechGeekHD with another video. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how I edit my photographs for Instagram. Everybody has a different way of editing photographs from Instagram, and that could be just on your iPhone, the phone that I'm actually filming this video on, or that could be using your dedicated camera. I kind of do a mix. Most of my Instagram stories are actually shot right on my iPhone. Uh, the iPhone 14 Pro actually has a really great camera, and it's actually very quickly become my primary camera that I walk around with and shoot both photos and videos with all the time. I honestly thought that the delta between the 13 Pro and the 14 Pro was substantial enough that it was worth the upgrade, and so I've had this phone since it came out. Uh, and I really have been very, very satisfied with the quality that both the photos and the videos produce. That being said, I have also been a photographer for many, many years, just an amateur one. I do this on the side and it's just been a fun hobby for me for many years. And in the last four or five years, it's really centered around taking casual pictures of cars at events like Cars and Coffee, mostly just for my Instagram feed, but also every once in a while to sell to the owners of the car. I've only made a few sales like those, but um, it has been a really fun hobby. I shoot with a Canon EOS R mirrorless uh, camera and I also use the Canon 24 to 70 uh, RF 2.8 lens. Uh, that's the RF mount for the Canon mirrorless system. Uh, it's an F 2.8 lens. It's 24 to 70, and this is a Canon L lens. So it is some of the highest quality glass that you can get from Canon. Uh, and I really have loved this camera. The only downside to it is the fact that when you switch to video, it actually crops into an APS-C size uh, frame. And so it isn't actually a full frame for video, but it is a full frame camera for uh, photography all of the time. Uh, so this has really kind of been my go-to cards and coffee shooter. Uh, all of the photographs that I've taken for today's sake are all in portrait mode uh, or are in portrait orientation. Uh, so these are likely going to make their way onto my Instagram story at some point. But without any further ado, let's get straight on into the actual process. Uh, I don't like to plug my camera into my computer. I, I do have a USB hub on my desk and so it could be easier, but I prefer to just grab my SD card and put it straight in my MacBook Pro. Um, I actually also have a little SD card thing uh, add-on onto my Pro Display XDR, uh, but I use, uh, I really like Transcend and SanDisk SD cards. For the last couple of years, at least on this camera, I've been using uh, an 128 gigabyte SanDisk um, uh, extreme SD card. This thing has served me pretty well. It's been pretty reliable. Older SD cards I'd noticed had like the little black like plastic bits start to fray and break. This thing's treated me well so far. Um, and so let's go ahead and plug it on into my computer and I'll show you uh, exactly what my process is like. So once the SD card's on my computer, what I do is I open up Finder, I navigate over to my SD card, find the folder that most of my photographs are in, uh, scroll down to the photographs that I want to edit for today's uh, video. All right, so once you've found the photographs that you wanna edit, some people like to create libraries inside of Adobe Lightroom. Uh, I actually am kind of the person who just drags these pictures straight into Lightroom and I worry about categorizing them and stuff after the fact. Uh, so I drag them into Lightroom, Lightroom CC opens up um, and it starts to show me previews um, of the photographs that I want to import, which is doing a little bit slowly today. Uh, here are just some, some pictures from before that I've worked in on Lightroom. This is just kind of my all photos library. Uh, so these are importing right now and they should be done in just a second. Lightroom CC uh, has been an adjustment for me. I was historically always a Lightroom Classic user, uh, but I have started using Lightroom CC in the last couple of years just because um, I have a friend who works at Adobe and it, I end up getting a good deal on it. So um, yeah, so I tap the E key on my keyboard to get to editing and let's find a photograph that I kind of want to go with for today. Um, and honestly, there's no right or wrong way to edit these photographs. It's really just about uh, the kind of look that you're going for. I have experimented with a couple of different styles in the last couple of years. Um, you know, I've a lot of people like this desaturated look, and I'm no stranger to that. This is a picture of my 718 Boxster, uh, and I, you know, obviously have killed a lot of the blues and the oranges in this picture. It looks a little bit stale, to be quite honest. Uh, but I've also been recently using kind of a more uh, like a softer style for um, some of these photographs as well. So here's a 997.2 911. Um, uh, that I saw at a Cars and Coffee event a couple weeks ago. And, you know, I've induced a lot of grain here. I've kind of kept it simple with the colors. And I think this is kind of what I'd like to go with for today as well. I think that that's kind of a the soft, like, 
um, purposefully messy look, I think is one that I've kind of been enjoying recently. And so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So there's a, some things that I like to correct right off of the bat. Here's a picture of this really beautiful 993 Turbo. Uh, and this is, you know, kind of in this gray color. Uh, not the easiest color to make pop or feel too vibrant when you're editing it, but there's some things you can do to really bring focus and attention to this car. So there's a few things we can do to kind of really make a color like this pop out. This is a, a gray 993 uh, Turbo, and it's a really beautiful car, but the gray color, of course, is not really a particularly flashy color and not something that ha draws a lot of visual interest to it just using color alone. Uh, and so what I like to do sometimes is start with just getting rid of the distractions in the photo. Uh, the main one here being kind of this big shadow and a couple of these marks down here, tire marks in the, in the actual asphalt. Uh, and so one of the things that I do like about Lightroom CC is the fact that it uses AI to kind of pretty cleverly uh, fix imperfections like these in photos. This is kind of what the future of computational photography and computational photo editing inside of uh, photography I think is going to look like. So using the content aware remove tool, um, this is using tech very similar to what Photoshop has had for many years with the content aware fill, uh, but it's gotten way better in Adobe Lightroom CC most recently. I can kind of just paint over the shadow here using my cursor uh, and very quickly what it does is analyze and you see this little thing pop up uh, and it kind of fills it in and there we go, the shadow is gone. And so previously what I used to use is use the heal tool here and what I would do is kind of paint over a subject that would create a copy and I would kind of map it over to an area of um, the texture that I thought looked right. And for some use cases that actually still works just fine. Uh, but this, I've noticed that this heel thing actually does work pretty well. So I kind of go through the photograph, uh, find areas that I think are gonna be visually distracting from the thing I'm trying to bring focus to, which in this case uh, is the 993 Turbo, these beautiful um, turbine wheels. And so I'm just gonna kind of quickly spot remove some of these things. I don't have to be perfect. I'm not gonna try and be perfect for this video. One of the things I like is just for my pictures to look like they were were not uh, too heavily doctored and kind of just feel like a, a casual like phone picture. I kind of dig that look. And I think that that's really all I need to do here right now. So here's a quick before and after. You can see it really kind of, it's just the little things, but it kind of cleans it up. All right, and so now that I've kind of cleaned those things up, what I want to do is start to play with the light. There's um, really sort of high, harsh um, highlights that I see in parts of this picture. And then there's also some fairly crushed shadows. I was actually shooting in full manual. And so really my control over the light was uh, ISO and was shutter speed here. Uh, we also noticed that this um, NC Miata back here is completely blown out in the highlights. And while that's not the focus of this picture, I don't want how crazily lit that is uh, to take away from the 993 Turbo. And so what I'm gonna start to do, and, and this is something I like to do, is go and fix lens vignetting just to start. And I like to keep that at 200 because I feel like it gives it a nice flat appearance and that's just the look that I like. Um, and here I'm gonna go into curves and start to, I always like to lay a midpoint out so that I'm not crushing everything. Uh, although some people prefer to do that just because they like the way that the curves behave naturally. I'm gonna start to drop these highlights a little bit. Um, just the slightest bit. You can see here on the histogram that it's, um, it, we, we see some kind of like this major peak right here. That's a good place to start, I find. Now, I don't want it to kind of lift these shadows up too much. That's what putting this control point here is actually doing. I like the manual control of figuring out where I want my shadows and darks to be. Um, and so I kind of like a little bit of high contrast, but I wanna get rid of some of these really, really gnarly highlights up here. Uh, and I think doing that in curves is kind of nice. Um, uh, we can also kind of make some exposure adjustments here. This is what I like to do is just play with um, my sliders here. It's really kind of the purpose of Lightroom CC being so simple as you can kind of quickly see what's going on. I wanna bump my contrast up just slightly. Uh, here's where I'm gonna take my highlights down quite a bit. And you can see the more substantial change to the Miata is taking place right there. I don't want it to be too like artificially low, but I think you know, maybe, maybe around here looks good. Um, this is already starting to look where I want it, a little bit more so than it, where we started. I'm gonna see what it's like with the shadows lifted a little bit. I think that's, that's not gonna run it for this picture. I think I like to keep the whites where they are because otherwise things start to look a little unnatural. And just to boost the contrast a little bit, I'm gonna actually drop the blacks just slightly. Uh, I also kind of like to look at the reds. This is just a personal style choice for me and I like to drop the reds ever so slightly uh, in the highlights and as well as the shadows would keep the midpoint around. I just kind of like that cooler greenish blue 
uh, tone uh, to some of the, the lower light ends of the picture. I don't really play with the, the green and the blue too much, but that's just me. Feel free to experiment. This is really how I learned, was just kind of clicking around and seeing what happened to the photos. Um, I want to make this a little bit warmer. This was a warm day, and doing some of those changes has kind of uh, cooled the picture down, but slightly moving, and I really try and be very, very minuscule with these changes. Uh, move it over to the right so I can bring a little bit more warmth into the lighting of this picture, and I think that that actually looks pretty good. Um, I don't play with vibrance too much, everyone, or I don't play with saturation too much. Vibrance is kind of nice because it kind of it is kind of a saturation slider, but what it's doing is picking and choosing. Um, where to kind of boost things a little bit. I think just a tiny little adjustment there is all this picture needs. Uh, and then here's where I like to have a lot of fun is in the color mixer. This is really fun for me. I don't really mess with hue, saturation, and luminance all that much. I kind of just, or like in their own like adjustments in this drop down. But what I do like to do is just play with each one of these colors. I typically start from the left and make my way over to the right. Now the prominent reds in this picture, of course, are the tail lights on some of these cars. I think the luminance is kind of good where it is. I might want to saturate these slightly more because I like the red brake calipers. Actually, I think that this one's a little bit blown out in the front. I don't not blown out, but a little bit overexposed for what I would like. So I'm going to drop that down slightly. That looks good. Uh, maybe give this a little bit more of an orange tint. Maybe drop this luminance ever so slightly. I think that's looking pretty nice, actually. I did see the change happen in this BMW M2's taillights, but I think that just given the framing, uh, I'm not too worried about that right now. Oranges, these ones are always important. Oranges and yellows can really change your picture. As you can see, there's orange and yellow and pretty much everything else just because of the natural light. I like to leave the luminance maybe the same or maybe drop it down slightly because I've overexposed in some of these other areas. Um, and then just trying to play around with the saturation. I think increasing it a little bit actually looks nice. It brings some life back into this grass and some warmth back in underneath the trees. Uh, same thing with the yellows. I'm probably not going to lift the yellows. I might actually drop them a little bit to bring a little bit more um, of a natural feel back to the back. Turn the saturation up a little bit. I like the saturation because there's a lot of yellow in these leaves and I really like how it feels up here. Uh, and I might want to actually bring this over to the left slightly. Not too much. I want them to feel like green, but I want them to feel a little bit more like fall. Uh, the greens, of course, I can play with here. I know what the prominent green is in my picture. It's just the leaves on these trees. Uh, maybe boost saturation ever so slightly and then bring these hues, uh, bring the hue over to the lighter yellow or green. Um, this kind of aqua color is like tealy color always shows up in, in the windows of cars and I kind of like to drop that a little bit and I like to drop the saturation nearly all the way. Uh, that's just me. Uh, again, this is like a personal stylistic change uh, and your mileage may vary here. I can see kind of a light adjustment happening in the highlights of the arches of the car when I do this and along the windshield. The blue, kind of like the orange and the yellow, is a very prominent color in natural light. And so what we're going to find is that playing with it can really kind of mess our photograph up. And so being very, very slight with the changes we make here, so boosting luminance ever so slightly. I don't really want to oversaturate this, but I like it being a little bit more teal than I do this like darker, purplier blue. You can look at the extremes and kind of decide the direction in which you want to kind of incrementally go. Um, these purples are not never really kind of a big prominent part of my photo, but they do sh sort of show up in the sky quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to drop this saturation almost down to zero because I think I have the sky where I like it. Maybe I'm going to boost that a little bit more given how much I dropped this. This magenta -y color, again, hasn't really shown up too much in this picture, so I'm going to leave that alone. I don't really go into color grading too much. This is something that you can absolutely do. It's just not something that's part of my workflow. I like to work relatively quickly with some of these things. Um, effects, I kind of just turn clarity up ever so slightly, just up to a two. Uh, when If it's a foggy day, sometimes I use the dehaze, but it's kind of just a kind of a contrast booster. Uh, and then here's where I decide whether I want to have fun with it or not, whether I want to kind of blow up the grain and make it feel like a an older, more textural photo, or if I kind of want to just leave it at um, what it what it kind of naturally looks like out of the camera. I think for today I'm going to add a little bit of grain and bump this up a little bit. It's just, I think it goes well with the period that this car is from, add a little bit of roughness. Um, I'm also probably going to add a little bit of pink to this just because that's how I like it for this look. I'm going to boost these blacks slightly um, and maybe drop this mid-tone a little bit and giving it a little bit more contrast. Since I've done that in the curves, I'm going to get rid of it in the sliders. 
um, and I'm gonna sharpen ever so slightly. And that's it, that's what my photograph looks like. Here's a before, here's an after. Let me go into full screen and show you that. Here's a before, there's a lot of stuff going on down here, and here's an after. This is this is really kind of how I do it. I mean, it's not a particularly complex process. I've gone through many different phases of what my cars actually end up looking like or what my photographs actually end up looking like. And I've come to a point where every couple of weeks I'm trying something new and every week is kind of a different theme on my Instagram page, which is kind of where most of these photographs end up. Here, I've basically just kind of copied those settings and pasted them over to the next photograph. I always take multiples of each car just so that I have a couple different angles and stuff that I think could look nice. Um, and this is kind of a really simple finished product for me. This is going to go on my Instagram. I have kind of like a, a little pattern in the way that I upload my car photographs, whether they're um, you know, facing kind of the front of the car or the side of the car. Um, so the left and the right side of the car. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. I'm just at TechGeekHD, exactly the same as I am here on YouTube. Um, I've also started trying to make um, a couple of quick little videos on TikTok, uh, and that's not really something I thought I would be doing necessarily, but I'm, I'm kind of having fun with it. It's mostly just car stuff again. Um, and so I, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll drop a link to that as well. It's called Smooth Brain, which is kind of a funny name, um, but yeah. Uh, this is kind of how I edit my photographs for Instagram uh, and really kind of wherever I share them. If you guys would like to see more videos like this, if you'd like to maybe buy presets, I definitely have different versions of how I edit my photographs. This is just kind of a peek into what I've been doing recently. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'll probably price it really, really um, accessible to as many people as possible, like just a couple bucks. I don't really want to I don't think it's worth charging all that much money for something like this. Um, and that's just if you weren't able to follow this tutorial or you really didn't find this style interesting, I'll try and put together a couple of other styles that I like. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys thought. Um, I haven't made a video like this before. I thought it could be kind of a fun change to the channel. Uh, and this is just something that I'm interested in and thought could be fun. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.